Hello, my name is Nico Tripsevich. I'm with the Archaeological Research Facility at UC Berkeley. Welcome to our practical workshop series. Today I'll be describing how to create a site grid in QGIS 3. Um, site grids are widely used by archaeologists for a variety of things. One thing we do with them is create a regular sampling interval for something like shovel test pits or for artifact uh, surface analysis. Another use is laying out site uh, grid excavation units. And finally, they're also used for laying out the squares and rectangles that are used in geophysical survey. So today's workshop, I'll be describing how to lay out a site grid and shift it and rotate it according to the needs in the field, and also how to export the resulting coordinates into a comma separated values table so that you can import that into a field instrument like a RTK GNSS unit or a total station, something precise enough to then be used in stakeout mode to locate those grid corners in the field so that you can then you know, drop pin flags and use them in your field work. So let's go ahead and get started in QGIS 3. And I'll begin by pointing out that I'm in um, metric coordinates in this uh, projection and coordinate system, NAD 83, Epoch 2011, UTM 10 North. And these are meters in, in UTM zones uh, 10 North, not uh, decimal degrees. And that's important because we're going to be doing metric measurements and we need to be using metric units. So here we have a site datum. And then Sort of simulating in a situation where we've already got a site datum that we're going to try to work with and we have some structure at the site like these roads and we're going to create a site grid using the vector creation tools here. So there's two tool sets that can create grids. One is regular points which will create um, a series of points either regularly or in, um, random offset. And this is useful if you need to create, say, exactly 100 points for sampling purposes. But in most cases, the create grid tool is more useful for archaeologists. Now, in both cases, you'll want to have a area delimited for the grid creation. That is, you need to specify what area gets gridded out. And so we'll begin by creating a polygon here in our demo polys um, layer, by making it editable. And I'm going to create a new polygon. And I'm going to demonstrate the use of this um, tools called advanced digitizing pane. This is only available if you're using projected coordinates, like um, metric coordinates like the UTM. I'm going to enable advanced digitizing. and I'll show you how this works. So you will create the, the study area by clicking in one of the corners. And then with the advanced digitizing tools, you can use these keyboard shortcuts on the side so that you don't interrupt your, your digitizing task. So I'm going to hit the D key and specify that I want the northern edge of my study area to be 80 meters. So I type 80, press return, and that now limits my movement to 80 meters anywhere in, in these directions. Uh, 80, 80 meters in any direction. And then I'll click to drop the first vertex. And now uh, I want to go 100 meters south. So once again, I'm going to click D and type 100 and I can go 100 meters south. And you may notice that it sort of snaps to that, that 180 degree southern direction. That's because I have these common angles selected. So that helps you to make right angle shapes. So I've clicked once there. Now I want to go, of course, 80 meters to the left. So I'm going to type 80 and guides me over to here. And then the last one's easy because it's already there. I'm going to click again and right click and type study area. 
So we have an area that we can grid out. Let's go ahead and create the grid. With grid types, you can choose points, lines, rectangles, diamonds, or hexagons. On this web page here, I've got the demo, the documentations pulled up showing what the diamonds and hexagons look like. Let's go ahead and create a point grid and we'll put it uh, inside this grid extent. Now there's three ways to determine the grid extent. One is to, to just draw a rectangle on the screen. The second is to use the map canvas extent, which is essentially the active window here. So you zoom in and we'll fill your map window with the grid. And the third way, if you need a more specific polygon, is to uh, choose it from a, an existing layer. So we're gonna go ahead and use the one we just created. And I want a grid spacing of 10 meters. Another one of 10 meters. And it's using the same projected coordinate system there. Go ahead and run. And close, and there it is. Now the first thing I'd like to show you here is that, let's stop editing. Uh, this grid is a virtual layer, a temporary scratch layer. So it doesn't really exist in, uh, on your drive. So if you want to save it, you should right click and say, make permanent. The second thing I'd like to mention is that uh, here on the attribute table, the coordinates are provided based on our original grid that you know, what we currently see. But if we change this grid at all, these are no longer accurate. So um, and I'll show you at the end here how to update this attribute table after we move this grid around a little bit. So one thing that frequently comes up is that you'd like your grid to conform with some existing stuff going on at the site, such as a site datum. You've already created a site datum and you want your grid to originate from the site datum and, and have regular intervals from that point. So let's shift this grid in order to match our existing site datum. So I've got snapping turned on. I'm going to choose the grid, make it editable, select the whole thing. Like so, and then I'll use this uh, move features tool. Zoom in and I'll choose one of them. And you, know, you can't see all of them. So it's warning you, you can't see all the features you're currently moving. And then I'll just click here and snapping's turned on. So it's really easy to shift it to the datum there. The uh, second thing that sometimes comes up is that you want your grid to pivot um, to match features at the site, such as this road or architecture like a wall or building foundations. So in order to pivot the grid, you could use the rotate features tool. We, we've still got all our points selected. When you choose the rotate features tool, this little red plus appears right in the center of your object group. And in this case, we don't want to pivot around there. We want to pivot around the datum. You almost always want to pivot around the datum when you're using these kind of um, rotations. And this sometimes comes up with total station points as well. So this is a useful skill for adjusting uh, points around a datum. If you hold down the control key and click, it moves that red plus right to wherever you clicked. So now it's because of snapping, it, it's exactly on the datum. And I can go ahead and click and, and click. You know, I clicked once and I'm moving and now you can see that it's gonna line up with the road if I put it right like so. There. So now we have a grid that aligns with the road that begins at this um, datum. And the one final issue that I mentioned earlier is that the uh, grid coordinates that are provided in this attribute table are based on that original grid that was uh, created initially by the create grid function. So these are no longer accurate because we've moved and rotated the 
the grid points. So why don't we go ahead and delete those. We're just gonna delete all these because they're not accurate anymore. And we'll create current ones using the field calculator. So we're gonna, we've got them all selected and we're gonna make a northern field. It should be decimal for full precision. You can even add additional points, but this is already sub-centimeter. And under geometry, there's a X and a Y function right here. So northings are moving north-south. So that's change in Y, right? So we'll just do dollar sign Y. Now we get all our northings. And likewise, we're gonna want an, uh, eastings. So we'll go ahead and make an eastings field, decimal degrees, and this will be dollar sign X. Now we have our eastings. And a final thing I'd like to mention about this is uh, one thing that can be very useful is to export these to a high precision GPS unit, such as RTK, GNSS, we have an MLID and uh, our MLID accepts points into the software using comma separated values. So what I would do is save this out as a CSV and I could upload it to our MLID and right click like this, exports. And I, I would export it as a CSV and then the reach view software in the case of MLID provides a stakeout function. So then what I could do is go out there and navigate to these points and drop a flag. The, other, other way, so stakeout guides you, you know, it tells you you need to move a certain number of centimeters in any direction to match this point. And our RTK system is roughly two centimeters in, um, in our region here in Northern California. So uh, that's pretty accurate, better than tape and compass. The, uh, the other thing you might do at this point is to create a a name field and name your, uh, I'll make it text, say 20 letters. And I would go ahead and name the important corners in your, in your grid. So let's say you're, you know, you're, you're gonna lay out now excavation grids or, or geophysical grids. You could, you could name the corners of your, of your grid by selecting them and then in the attribute table, I'll you know, call this one, say, Northeast Grid A Northeast. And label that. And, and you could go ahead and, and label the important points in your grid that you'd like to then stake out in the um, RTK GPS software and, uh, and it will guide you to your grid that you created virtually in QGIS. I'll follow up on this workshop tutorial with another one on using these with geophysical data. <laughs>